is said that Christianity was first brought to the Isle of Man by St. Patrick in 444 AD. Since then, the saint has been incredibly important to the Manx, with a large number of sites and stories dedicated to the saint. Although some of these might be quite well known, most are not, and some are very interesting. There are many locations which claim to be the spot where St. Patrick landed on the Isle of Man. The best known of these is St. Patrick's Isle over at Peel, which is where Peel Castle now stands today in the parish of Patrick. But another version of this story is that the island was actually off the coast here in Jerby. Now it might have long since fallen into the sea by coastal erosion, but there is a spot about two miles off today's coast where there is a rise in the seabed and it's thought by some that this is the site of the true St. Patrick's Isle. But there's another contender for where St. Patrick first landed on the Isle of Man, here at the Sound. Legend says that he was brought here by a curlew, and in thanks to the bird, he blessed it and said that no one would ever find its nest. It was also here that he blessed the Isle of Man, an event which was so momentous that his footprints were preserved here in the rock. In 1939, this concrete box was put around the footprint, so you had to put a penny in the slot so you could turn on a light to see the footprint inside. Luckily for us though, the box is long since broken and we can now have a skeet in at the footprint for free. This is what remains of Kiel Ferrick at Balafria. It's one of the many chapels which were the first Christian structures on the Isle of Man. Many of these were dedicated to St. Patrick, but this has been said to be the first of all of them. A different Kiel Ferrick was said to be built by materials from Ireland when St. Patrick himself commanded the devil to swim them over. But this Kiel is connected to a different St. Patrick story, the one of the Abbey Ferrick. The story is that St. Patrick was walking here in this field in Brown when a thorn pricked his ankle. Furious, he cursed the field to never grow crops again. He repented about this, and in punishment to himself, he slept here on this rock, which is Liavi Ferric, or Patrick's bed, with the quartz stone for a pillow. St. Patrick's curse is still on the field, as it's said that no crops have grown here from that day to this. St. Patrick is said to have first preached the gospel here at St. Patrick's Chair in Moroun. In fact, some archaeologists have said that the crosses on these stones date to the 5th century, which is when he was supposed to have been here. So it could be here that St. Patrick first banished the snakes and toads, and also the visible devils and a multitude of magicians. Either way, it's said that if you sit down on the chair, you'll never again be weary. If weariness isn't your particular problem, you can always come to a chibiferic. These holy wells dedicated to St. Patrick are all over the Isle of Man, and the normal practice was to walk around them a number of times, saying a particular prayer, and then leave an offering of some description here. It was then thought that the water had the ability to cure you of whatever it was you were suffering from. Although there is a lot about St. Patrick which is up for debate, there is one thing which is not. From the moment he first set foot on the island, through to the many churches which bear his name today, St. Patrick has an important part in the story of the Isle of Man, and he is still very much with us today. <laughs>